Praise the Lord. Let's read chapter 3 now. Daniel chapter 3. Who read it for me? Daniel chapter 3. The book of Daniel. We have finished chapter 1. We have finished chapter 2. We are now in chapter 3. Another interesting chapter. Hallelujah. I read from verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the palm of Dura, in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king, Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then an herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackboard, satry, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. Verse And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fairy furnace. Therefore, therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackboard, satry, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They speak and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackboard, satry, and those seamen and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worship it, that he should be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought this man before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, South, sackboard, satry, and those sima, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Yeah. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful 
to answer thee in this matter. Hey. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us That's right. from the burning fairy furnace, and he will deliver, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. 19. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should hit the furnace and won seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fairy furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their horses, and their hats and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fairy furnace. Verse 22. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the fire, midst of the burning fairy furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was as tawny and rose and rose up in haste. Okay, let me, let me help you. Let me help you. Verse 24. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was as tawny and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, true, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like who? The Son of God. Let me read on. Verse 26. Thank you. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fairy furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their head singed. Neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Glory. Who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language will speak anything Amis against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver. So let's just look at what the story is trying to let us understand. First, the image, notice the dimension of that image. The height was 60 cubits. Three score is 60. And the width was six cubits. And there's something about this six, 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 six. Amen. That is speaking of. What is the statue? Which image was that that he made? Well, different, different uh, interpretations. Even me one day. I think I said it was Daniel's image. No, I think we can understand better. Because remember that he already had a revelation that you know the, 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 the recognition of him as the first empire to rule the whole world. And I believe that 
Remember that it got to a time that he himself taught himself to be God and desired worship. A writer rightly said it that in Egypt, the emperors there in Egypt, the Egyptian uh, uh, pharaohs and the kings or whatever they call them used to erect their own image. Once you reach a king, you have all the power, you become one of the gods of the land. So I believe maybe that's the same kind of pattern, but you know, because of the claim he had been making, which we shall see later on, that made God to turn him to an animal. We shall see later on. I believe that it was his own stature he made because he wanted everybody to uh, worship him. Of course, remember that the image that he saw in the dream that he had was the image of a man. So certainly uh, that may be what was in his mind that will make him erect that image. But it's not just the erection of the image, but the purpose for the erection was to cause a one religion state that everybody in the empire will have one religion worshipping that image. So it was more about creating a religion, creating an idol for worship than even just uh, emulating any other empire. And remember that Nebuchadnezzar started the man's control of earth, the rulership by man. And he therefore started the religion of the worship of a human beings. The mystery Babylon today has copied. Saint Lumumba, Saint Jude, Saint this, canonization and what not. The worship of statue. The bow before them started from Babylon. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And remember that six is the number of man. Amen. The earth was created in six days. God allowed man to also walk for 6,000 years. Take control of the earth. He allowed man. Amen. And, 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 and six, therefore, can also stand for the number of human, identify human incompleteness. Man. And you notice that it is also in Genesis chapter 6 that the ungodliness was multiplied on the earth until God regretted creating man. It's in Genesis chapter 6. Man himself was created on the sixth day. So when he said he allowed man to take over the earth for six days, and here is Nebuchadnezzar prophetically raising an image that was six cubit wide and 60 feet uh, cubit in, in height. You know it is pointing to something. The number seven is the number for God's day. Seven is God's number for completeness. Six is man's number of incompleteness. After incompleteness and all the shortcomings, completeness will come in the seventh day. That is the millennium day. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is speaking of the last. It started with man and it will end with man. The last power by man is identified in Revelation chapter 13 with the number 666. That is the number of the beast. In Revelation chapter 13 for identification. And that beast that 
uh, uh, an image is given to worship the gift, the, the beast. There is an image that is raised unto the beast in Revelation chapter 13 that ends up the rulership of man on earth here just before you know the commencement of the rulership of God on earth here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now let's go a little bit deeper in what we seem to understand here. You will notice something that Nebuchadnezzar I mean raised up built that image and invited as we see verse 2 verse 3 invited all the dignitaries of the kingdom from everywhere he invited them if you read that story very carefully they, 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 they thought they were coming for the dedication of that image he did not tell them what they were coming for I mean the real reason they were coming for he invited them to come for the dedication of that image so by the side there they had instrument players all manner of instruments were standing by the side so if you were a dignitary that was invited to come certainly you are expecting to come and have some fanfare for the dedication of such a huge magnificent edifice like that just imagine the height of that uh, image. Amen. But what did it turn out later? It turned out to be after they came and the whole story changed. They were now ordered by decree that they will worship that beast at the sounding of those instruments. Remember that everything is pointing to the agenda of God on earth here. Everything is pointing us to understand what is also going to happen at this end time. Nebuchadnezzar for Babylon. This, uh, 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 the world empire started with Babylon. Interestingly, Although it is ending with the Roman Empire, the truth is, it is ending with a mystery Babylon. It started with Babylon, it will end with Babylon. And so here we are in the divine agenda that was given to Daniel in Daniel chapter 9 concerning the Antichrist. Verse 27 tells us that the, 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 that he, the Antichrist, will enter a covenant with many nations. With many. And that covenant is supposed to last for seven years. But in the midst, in the middle of that covenant, that is three and a half years later, he breaks the covenant and then tells everybody, Amen. You either bow, oh glory be to God, Praise the Lord. You either bow or you are destroyed. You take the mark, the mark of the beast, you take it or on your forehead or your right hand. You either take it, the whole story changed. And everyone that refused to take it, it was persecution and the tribulation that the whole world is familiar with. That great soon coming tribulation. Hallelujah. That is why she is called Mystery Babylon. And it is that little horn. That little horn that produces that. All that he was doing at that time, Nebuchadnezzar, he was establishing a religion of Babylon. The religion of Babylon was a religion of idol worship. The religion of Babylon, idol worship. All manner of images, images 
images. And here we are. In Revelation chapter 17, we have that woman. Can we read it? Chapter 17. Revelation. Let's read from verse 1. Hallelujah. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment. The judgment, that is the end of the great whore, prostitute, that seated upon many waters. Let me read it. And please take time and just follow. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. The kings of the earth. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Remember, it is revelatory language. So you are supposed to know the meaning of these terminologies. Verse 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. Full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns. So it's giving you, giving you the direction of where it is now. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. And you know, interestingly, I, I looked at the picture yesterday or so. The color that the priests that the, of Catholic, I saw it, they lined up in, in Rome of all the priests there. The color is purple. They all dress in purple. Try to look at it. Look at the, the things they wear. Including the Pope himself. And decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, the woman. And this woman here is a church. I told you here several times, there are three symbolic churches in the Bible. The first one is Israel in Revelation chapter 12. The second one is this Revelation chapter 17 and is the church of Rome. And the third one is Revelation chapter 19. The bride has made herself ready. Okay. Acts 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery. Just a mystery, comma. Babylon the Great. The mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Hey. See what is written on her forehead. This is her identity. Her identity was mystery. You look at her, there is something mysterious about her. Babylon the Great. The mother of Harlots. If it's a mother, then she has children. Correct? That's why she's described as a mother. Because she gave birth to children. And those children are the denominations that broke away from her. And abominations, she's also the mother of abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. Those that he killed in the first church age, second church age, under the red horse rider in Revelation chapter 6. And with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wonder with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore did thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carry her, which had the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sowest was and is not. As at the time that he was giving John that revelation, was not. And shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wander. The only people that will wander 
are those whose names we are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. So there are some names that are written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. And that's why we keep telling you the book of life, your name is not written the day you give your life to Christ. Your name was written from the foundation of the world. And only those whose names are written in the book of life will come to Christ. That's why Christ said, all that the Father had given me past tense, will, future, come to me. And I will lose none. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, when you see any pastor make altar call, and he's saying, say after me, and he's saying, among other prayers, Father, write my name in the book of life. The pastor does not know what the book of life is. The book of life was written from the foundation of the world. Because God has finished all his works from the foundation of the world. As far as he's concerned, the Bible says Christ was crucified when? From the foundation of the world. That's when Christ's matter was settled. The divine agenda, hallelujah, did not start from the cross on Calvary. Amen. It has already been done and God is resting and is waiting for every item in that agenda to be fulfilled. Praise the Lord. So there is nothing happening that is taking him by surprise. That's why he is informing his bride so that when they begin to come to pass, you will know that scriptures are being fulfilled. Amen. You are coming to Christ is scripture fulfilled. Hallelujah. And when you come, he will not lose you. That's why we say, once you are saved, forever, you are saved. Because God is not saving by gamble. For whom he did foreknow, foreknowledge, before your mama meet your papa, in fact, before Nigeria was formed. Amen. He already knew you and knew your name. Oh, glory be to God. For whom he did foreknowledge, know in advance, omniscient God. That's who he is. He said, whom he did foreknow, he also did pre, pre, predestinate. Your destiny was determined before you were formed. It makes me feel so happy. Oh, glory be to God. I am not existing by accident. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. And because I am not existing by accident, I will not die by accident. I will die by his knowledge. I will die by his program. If he has not finished with me, I cannot die. That's why we say untimely death, because he has the time. The enemy does not have the time. That's why I told you, those whose names are written in the book of life, he says, moreover, whom he did predestinate, he said, them he called. Come to me. It's not for everybody. Come to me. All ye that labor, he's talking to his own. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten soul, that whosoever, whosoever, Whosoever but the foundation of God standeth sure. The Lord knoweth them that are his. He knows who is calling by whosoever. Him not. Why is everybody not coming? Oh, glory be to God. My sheep hear my voice. When did they become his voice? His sheep. From the foundation of the world, they became his sheep. Not the day they came to the altar and gave their life to Christ. They have always been his sheep. He's just calling you. When you hear that voice, oh, glory be to God. And when he calls, they are those he will justify. Through the ordinance of water baptism. Others will never know it. Or they will just come and just come to, because others. You know, some people come for water baptism. The reason is not for the salvation of their soul. It's for deliverance. Uh -huh. 
So, 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 but, but the genuine seed, first, we repent. Hallelujah. You will repent. And it is that state of mind that God will see. When you come like this, then he will glorify. By the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The hope of glory. The seal until the day of redemption. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you have received eternal life. And you are not born again until you have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You are not a Christian until you have received the Spirit of Christ. And you are not a Christian by joining any church, by being a worker in any church. You are not even a Christian because you are a pastor. You are not a Christian because you are a preacher. Because motivational speakers have also changed their nomenclature. From motivational speakers, they have become pastors and they are gathering people and they are motivating them the way, you know, in the name of Jesus and creating the picture as if they, they themselves are Christians. They are not Christians because you can talk, because you can preach, does not make you a Christian, because you can heal, because you can cast out devil, because you can do miracle signs and wonder. It is not the basis for you to determine that you are a Christian. How you became the son, the child of your father, that is how you become the child of Jesus Christ. By one spirit are we baptized by the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You have no spirit of Christ. The Bible says you are none of his. Your father's, you are your father's child because the blood of your father is in you and you were born into it by a process of a birth. And so it is also. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so that peace, the only people that we wonder, they are those whose names we are not written in the book of life, verse 8, from the foundation of the world, when they behold the peace that was and is not, and yet is. Why will it be only those whose names are not written in the book of life? Because those whose names are written in the book of life have revelation. Oh, hallelujah. Why they are looking at that antichrist man and they are worshipping him and he's so reverent and holding him in high esteem. The bride is looking at him as a devil. Waiting, instrument of devil, waiting to be incarnated. Oh, glory be to God. And here is the mind which had wisdom. You see why? Why now? Why we cannot? Because we are the only ones that we read in this place and take heed to it. He wants to give you interpretation now. Verse 9, he wants to give you interpretation now. And here is the mind which had wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman seated. So you want to look, okay, anyway. Let me go ahead. And there are seven kings. Five are falling and one is, and the other is not. It's not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. I have the history that confirms what happened in verse 10. It has already taken place. And the peace that was and is not. The peace that was and is not. Even he is the eighth and is of the seven I go it into partition. I will read it again. <laughs> it's written like that so that people, some people should not understand it. And the peace that was and is not. Why is he, why was he is a power that existed and later on it ceased to exist Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He said, even he is of the eight. Because he's talking about the eight heads that ruled the Roman Empire. Hallelujah. Even he is the eight. He said, this beast that was and is not, he is the eight. But he said, and he is of the seven. Because there are, sorry, there are seven Caesars that ruled Rome. 
this one that was and is not, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He is going to come, but he is the eighth, but he will come, he will come in the order of the other seven. He is coming to rule Roman Empire as one, 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 one entity. Verse 12. And the ten horns which thou sowest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet. The time that John was receiving that revelation, those ten toes had not been formed because it was uh, uh, I mean, the empire was still one together. They had not broken yet. But those ten kings, he said, but they received power as kings one hour with the beasts. They gained their independence the same time with that other power. These ten kings have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. You see what? And we know the beast where it is verse 14. This shall make war with the Lamb and the Lamb shall overcome them for he is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he said unto me, interpretation now, the waters with that sowest we are the hall seated because the Bible tells us, we read earlier that it's seated upon waters. He said, the meaning of the waters, with that so is, where the hall seated, they are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. That beast will control multitudes, people, nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sowest upon the beast, this shall hate the hall. It's his history that will come to pass. And shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God has put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. Finally, verse 18. And the woman now, with that sowest is who? Is that great city which reigned over the kings of the earth. So Revelation chapter 17, the location is a city. The location is a city surrounded by seven hills. And geography lets us know that there are two cities or two or three cities or so in the whole world that is surrounded by seven hills like that. One of them is Jerusalem. But you see from this depiction, it cannot be Jerusalem. And the other one is Rome. The city. In fact, Rome is severally by historians referred to as the city with seven hills. So, the beasts, where is the location? Is Rome. The beast, hallelujah, praise the Lord. So that, here we see Daniel is talking about, uh, 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 what do you call him? Nebuchadnezzar establishing a religion of Babylon. Now, mysteriously, cunningly, smartly, what he could not achieve, the same old Satan, is now using this institution in Rome and coming back to establish what he lost in the Babylonian days. That's why it's a mystery because of the very crafty way he's doing it. But Apostle Paul caught it. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7, he said, but the mystery of iniquity doth already work. That mystery is how all power will come and be given to this little state. The Vatican is supposed to be the head of a church, but it's more than the head of a church. 
It has committed fornication with nations. How? In league with all political forces in the world. It has a seat, a church. -o. First, it is an independent, it's, in fact, it's, a, it's, it's a state within a state. It has a currency, has a police, has a court, has everything. Amen. I remember what her identity is. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The wine of her fornication gave all of them to drink. That is introduced her doctrines worldwide. And it is the largest organization today in the whole world. Wherever you are, it's in your interest to respect him. But that is what he used in plugging, later on we shall see, in plugging those three kings. This little horn plucked off three kings. Why? Because the whole people have one religion. They were having obedience to the bishop of Rome as at that time. He had the control of all. Remember, there was only one dominant religion. It was the Catholic Christianity. And he was the head. So here you are, everybody there, you are a political head, but the person that has the last say is the religious leader. And so it was very easy for him to come to one of them one time when he wanted to humble him and then just sent an order that nobody should respect the king, nobody should do this, nobody should just, you know, cause a strike in the whole country. So with that, he humbled the king. The king came. And the history said he kept him during the winter. December cold. The king came to see him. Kept him there for how many days or so? He didn't give him audience. Cold. Shiba, shiba, you know? You have to do small purgatory. Do small penance. But disobey him. That was when he started small, 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 small. In gaining his power. But later on, that power was destroyed. That is why he was and he is not. But he's coming back in a very mysterious way. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And he is, has even names, blasphemy, blasphemy, blasphemous names. When we shall see it in, in, in Daniel chapter 7, he's given a mouth that speaks blasphemous words. His name, his title is the Vicar of Christ. And Vicar of Christ means he is in the stead of Christ. And if you can accept that, then he's actually telling you he is to be worshipped. He has the final say. I'm not telling you what you don't know. These things are in the internet. Google it. I'm not, I'm not saying anything new. Google it. They, will, they, are, they are there. In fact, you will read it from now till, till December. You have not finished. You read it every day. Because the mystery surrounding that office there is great. It, and it's so important because it is pointing to an end time, you know, closing event of this earth. And it is all running around that office. When we come to Daniel chapter 9, we will see it there also. The role he will play, and then we'll go to Daniel chapter 12. There are things that we'll see that point infallibly who this man is. And I'm not, you know, I am preaching Bible. I'm a preacher. I'm telling you the interpretation of Bible. We are not struggling anything with him. With, I'm not talking against your faith. Please, if you're a Catholic, don't be angry. Listen to what I am saying. I'm showing you by the scripture. If you know any other person that fulfilled that scripture, please let me know. Certainly, Isis will not fulfill that place. Certainly, Boko Haram will not fulfill Revelation 17. In fact, it's a woman, so I don't know which woman you want to use that is that like that. And don't push it forward because he is right with us already. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 